That's it. I'm Jerry with PressureWasher.net, Bulldog Pro Pressure Washers and Sirocco Vacuums. I want to show you the maintenance on a portable pressure washer with uh, belt drive configuration and 12 volt uh, charging and starting system. Um, this happens to be a 23 horse, 6.5 gallon a minute, 4000 psi system. Uh, this one has a uh, secondary exhaust system on the muffler of the engine to quiet it down. The, engine, the muffler underneath is a stainless steel uh, special designed MagnaFlow, which is going to live forever. And we have a protected, um, flexible exhaust line to uh, protect people from touching it. Um, let's go to the maintenance procedures. On the Vanguard V-Twin engine, um, you've got a fuel, uh, uh, excuse me, you've got a, uh, o an oil filter down on the side here. When you change the oil of this engine, you should change the oil filter. It's not a huge filter, so it should be changed every time you change the motor oil. Motor oil should be changed every 150 to 200 hours, depending on how, how dirty it is. Uh, watch, your, um, watch your maintenance. And um, our meters are available for these if you want to be that meticulous. Not everybody wants them, so we make them optional. Um, but yeah, our meters are your friend if you want to really be meticulous about maintenance and make things last a long time. Uh, these engines um, have finally been approved by the manufacturer for, for uh, synthetic blend or even full synthetic oils. They finally admitted that they do last longer when you use synthetic oil. We recommend synthetic 1040. And uh, even a high mileage is a synthetic blend. That's better than a cheap junk oil. It only holds about a quart and a half of oil, so be nice to it. Give it really good quality oil. It has a better chance of living a long time, especially if this thing is running in the desert or in high, high temperatures. So take care of your machine. Um, the dipstick um, is here, and the uh, notch um, on this uh, has hash marks on it to show you the full level mark. Um, you can see right there is the top of the of the of the hash marks. That's where you want to keep the oil to. Consider this the low level, not a high level. We want to always see it at the high level. We don't ever want it to creep down to the low level. Don't be lazy in taking care of your machine. For every th every six ounces of oil this engine is low, it's probably going to be another 10 or 15 degrees that this engine is running. So be nice to it. Take care of it. Give it its best chance to live a long time, and you will enjoy long-term, low-cost, and reliability. Okay? Um, this has a pulse-type fuel pump on it to suck fuel in from a remote source. This is a fuel filter right here. We have it connected to a 5-gallon portable fuel cell back behind here with a quick coupler on the on the uh, on the tank so it's really easy to move around and store and um, as maintenance make sure that the o-rings in that quick coupler are always nice if they look like they're getting uh, chewed up then for sure change them and never use anything but buna o-rings in a gasoline coupler if you, you if you think you're upgrading to Viton in this application you'll be making a mistake because gasoline will swell Viton o-rings and you'll end up with a quick coupler that won't to go together or it won't come apart one or the other now the water supply on this comes in from a garden hose connection right here into that big filter but we've also added a cam lock coupling so you can take this off and put on a big feed line from a water tank feed application okay the you always want the pump to have an easy time drawing water whether you're pressurizing it in with the garden hose you know even if you're running it a long distance if using a big hose three-quarter inch hose is not that big a hose for seven and a half gallons a minute when you're talking about 150 or 200 feet of hose. You really should avoid going longer than 100 feet of hose when it's even three-quarter inch using a seven and a, six and a half gallon a minute machine like this. So just think about a perfect water supply getting to this pump and it has a chance to live a long time. Long-term low cost comes from management skills. The um, pressure-fed combination 
utilizes a bypass that goes back to the inlet side of the tank. So your unloader, in this case, is connected to the high pressure side coming in and going out when your gun is open, otherwise bypassing back to the inlet side of the pump. This one has a long bypass hose that goes all the way around to the back side of the pump here that you can't see in this video. But uh, the longer the bypass hose, the more water is bypassing. And in this case, we've got um, a, a nice three quarter inch hose wrapped around underneath here uh, for, you know, for a good water supply when it's bypassing. Um, this makes this a multifunctional tool. You can tank feed it or um, pressure feed it from a garden hose. This secondary regulator that we have on here for reducing the pressure down to 1200 to 2000 PSI by just opening this valve, this bypasses back to the same port. So um, when you're troubleshooting, you might want to disconnect one or the other from this connection when you're trying to figure out if this is bleeding or that is bleeding. Um, call for more instruction on that. But anyway, the secondary regulator gives you the ability to adjust your pressure from 1200 PSI or actually 1000 PSI to 2000 PSI. And uh, that, that means you don't have to change the setting, the critical setting on your high pressure um, unloader valve. The high pressure setting is a plus or minus an eighth of a, of a turn setting that is the difference of a spike pressure of an extra 100 or 200 PSI when you let go of the gun. You want to make this pump work easy for the rest of its life, make sure that your spike pressures are under control. And one of the reasons that we put a secondary regulator on when we are um, when we're using uh, Thailand grout cleaning or other lower pressure applications is um, is to protect the unloader from everybody in the in the in the plant or everybody on your team changing the settings. We don't want those settings changed from the sweet spot. Um, the oil takes a special high grade hydraulic oil. It should not ever get cheap motor oil. Yes, you could get away with non-detergent 30 weight in a pinch if you had an emergency. Let's say the oil was leaking and you had to finish the job. It's the middle of the night, you got an emergency and you're willing to put a diaper under this thing to catch the oil as long as you can just finish the job. If you can keep oil in it, you can keep running it. And you could use cheap non-detergent 30 weight if you had to, but it is the cheapest oil Oil you would want to use in a pump even under an emergency situation so stick with high-grade hydraulic oil it's even best if you use a synthetic synthetic hydraulic oil is available um, in hydraulic oils the weight category is different you'll use a 95 um, um, a 75W95 weight oil in synthetic. Um, hydraulic oils, like I said, are, are rated differently. Um, if you want to um, see the chart to, to see how these different oils compare, I'm gonna have that posted on my website, but take my word for it. You wanna use a synthetic high grade hydraulic oil in this pump to make it last a long time. When we plumb a system with a high volume bypass line and we give it its best chance to live a long time in not overheating and bypass, the least you can do is take care of the back end. They're pretty much indestructible as long as you treat it decent. This is a dipstick that you, you, that you use to check the oil when you can't see the, the sight glass. This one has a sight glass on the front, so we, we don't have to use the dipstick. Uh, the little indentations here show you where you want the oil level to be. Well, guess what? That's the minimum level. We want that level in the, in the pump to be slightly above that. We're gonna bring that up a little bit when we get these from the factory. They usually fill them at the minimum level. We wanna bring it up to a little bit above that, that line. And to check the oil with the dipstick, instead of using screwed in level, then what we wanna do is, here's the notch on the dipstick. I wanna dip it into the oil instead of screwing it in to see where that level is. I want that oil level to be right up here at the top of the notch. And that's gonna, that's gonna tell you uh, that's going to show you a, a, a higher level on the uh, window and that's where you want this thing to live for the rest of its life. If that's an extra few ounces of oil 
um, over what the factory recommends, then let's just call that a couple ounces of insurance. Um, high grade oil, keep plenty in it, pay attention to it. The two rules around pump systems are number one, no leaks on the water side. Number two, no leaks on oil. I never want to have oil leaking from the engine. I never want to have oil leaking from the pump. This is a check that you do every day. Put your hand underneath that pump and make sure there's no oil on your hand, no water on your hand. We want to know for sure that you don't have a maintenance problem. Just put your hand underneath the frame and if you don't see any oil or water on your hand, then turn the water on, plug in the gas, start that baby up and clean something.